Lamer Gamers. You are listening to the Lamer Gamers podcast, and welcome to the Lamest Gamers Holiday Guide 2019. My name is Simply Travis, and I'll be whisking you away on a majestical sleigh ride of holiday savings that you can find on Black Friday, along with some suggestions for different family members. I'll also make some suggestions for the most economical ways to get a kid or a teenager a brand new console without taking out a brand new loan to pay for it. Now that we have the introduction taken care of, it's time for me to put on some glowing red noses on my dog's pig, bell, and short stack, hitch them up to a sleigh, and don my orange and cyan Santa hat as we ride on through the night to bring you the lamest, gamest holiday guide 2019. Now pig, now bell, now short stack, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Before we get started with the holiday guide, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at ParallaxMedia.one. They're a good old gaming journalism website that decided to help spread our podcast around to the masses, so drop by and check these guys out. So we're going to start off this guide, and I'm going to read through some of the biggest story advertisements first, and then I'll point out some of the best deals with my views on certain games that may or not may or may not be a good choice for different age groups. So we're going to start out with the most accessible of the bunch, Walmart. After we go through these different guides, I'll then uh, point out different price points for what you want to spend on your kids and things like that. All right, here we go. Let's go mosey on over to Walmart, and they have. Yeah, I'm looking in a. I'm looking in a digital newspaper, but I'll make some newspaper noises so you feel like you're, uh, you know, just kind of watching the or looking in the Sunday ad with me. Okay, first up, we have Walmart, and right off the bat, it looks like they are pushing Xbox over everybody else. Uh, the big one that you see up there, the special buy for one forty nine, is the Xbox One S one terabyte all digital edition console. It's going to come with Minecraft, with Sea of Thieves, and Fortnite. Uh, it also includes, um, I believe that's just it. It's going to include the controller. You know, you'll be able to play it. Next thing, though, is the Xbox Live three-month subscription card for 15 bucks. I really don't suggest it. If you're going to get Xbox Live, you might as well get Game Pass. It is well worth it in the end. And they have a deal right now, I think, for three months. Uh, it's 24 bucks. It's something like that. Uh, next one up is the another big bundle uh, for this Christmas is the PlayStation 4 one terabyte bundle. Now, this is not probably the bundle you want to get a little kid unless you're a gamer dad or mom and you want to snake video games at night because you're going to have to buy them more games because the games that this comes with are The Last of Us, not for children. Uh, it also comes with God of War, definitely not for children. And it comes with Horizon Zero Dawn, complete edition. I mean, you're, you're fighting robots, but it's definitely a teenager game. It's an older teenager game. Last of Us and God of War are not made for your little kids. You don't want Kratos going around and, you know, literally cutting people's heads off and get that game to a five-year-old. Bad idea. All right, next up, uh, we have and pretty much the one uh, Xbox One S bundles are on sale for everywhere for $1.99 each. Uh, however, Walmart has that special edition one that is all digital that I said right at the beginning that's $150. Now, the problem with the $150 version is that you can't put game discs into it. You can only go digital. Now, it's a great choice if you have a good internet connection and you just want to get Game Pass for the year, which Game Pass, you know, Ultimate uh, comes in at like $15 a month or less than that usually if you can get a deal. Um, it, that's a good way to go if you don't want to, one, put out a whole lot of money up front. You just want to put $150 down then do the monthly subscription. You have access to over 100 games, and they're good games. They're not like the cheapo knockoff games. They're going to be first parties and everything else. We've talked about Game Pass a lot on this. It's convinced me to get a new Xbox One X. 
I would suggest it. If you're like just going that route, you have a teenager or something, now watch out. Make sure you put the, um, you've got a younger kid, still probably not for them. Xbox is not the best console choice for the younger crowd, uh, I believe like below teenager years, mainly because they just don't have a whole lot of games for it that are really child driven. Now, another console that's up on here, Xbox One X, the one terabyte uh, Gears 5 bundle includes Gears of War 1 through 5. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, you pair that with, uh, you add that with Game Pass and you're pretty set. If you're like a older teenager to adult gamer, uh, ladies, if you have a husband that likes gaming, that's probably a good console to look into. Lots of good stuff on that one. Also, they have a ton of Xbox controllers on sale for 40 bucks. So, and PlayStation 4. Now they do have um, some new games, some old games on sale. They have a couple of different brackets in Walmart. First up, um, they have $30 ones, $25 ones, and $20. Now, they do have this one $38 sale when it's a Modern Warfare Call of Duty game uh, for PlayStation 4. That's the big game out that's right now uh, that's new. It's, good. it's a good price for the game. I haven't played it yet. It's really not my cup of tea. Now, let's go into the $30 games at Walmart. For $30, bucks, you can get a whole bunch of really good Nintendo Switch games, uh, which are normally... Like, their first party games in this list are Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, Zelda, Mario Tennis Aces, and Super Mario Party. They don't really drop in price that often. Not a bad deal. Would highly suggest it. Also, uh, Nino Cooney is a pretty good one if you have, like, a, a younger kid or teenager that likes Pokemon-style games uh, and likes a good story. It's a Miyazaki-inspired uh game. I've talked about it here on the podcast a couple of episodes. There's also Resident Evil 4, uh, also on this list. If you have a... I wouldn't really suggest some of these games for teenagers or older... Maybe a late teenager, and you just gotta understand what's in these games. But... In the $30 bracket, Red Dead Redemption 2, Borderlands 3, Need for Speed Heat, uh, Monster Hunter, Iceborne, uh, NHL 2, which is fine for anybody, uh, Ghost Recon, and Gears 5. Uh, now, those are all pretty good games for that price. Uh, we'll move over to the $25 bracket, and it has a bunch of third-party games. Your, your games that are really standout games in this list are going to be for Switch, Diablo, uh, Overwatch, Final Fantasy games. There's a bunch of different Final Fantasy games for that price. Uh, on the PlayStation 4 in this group, Sekiro, if you want to be angry all the time and throw things at your TV, Sekiro is the game for you. It's a very Soulsborne-esque game. Uh, there's your Call of Duties for PlayStation 4, Mortal Kombat 11. Once again, not suggested for children. Um, and you have Sims. My niece loves Sims, uh, like insanely. It's weird. Uh, Xbox One, it has the Sims. Also, for 25 bucks for Xbox One now, uh, Call of Duty World War II, the new Plants vs. Zombies game, which is kind of shooter-based. It's not that uh, strategy game that it used to be. Forza and Sea of Thieves, all pretty good games. Now, Sea of Thieves is an online game. Okay, something to take into consideration. Like, you might need to be in the room with your kids while they're playing it. If you have younger kids that are playing the game. It's a it's a pirate game where you go around and search for treasure. You work with people. You really need a crew of people. Generally, it's been a pretty friendly online community. I haven't had any problems with it. It is tends to skew younger, but with any online game, just keep an eye out. Next up in the $20 category... Uh, we see a lot more uh, for Nintendo Switch, some decent children's games. Uh, there's a Crash Racing game, Sonic Racing game, Mario Rabbids. Not the best games in the world. The Switch category is not very good in either the $20 or the $15 category. I wouldn't suggest a whole lot of games in there. Uh, Xbox has Minecraft. That's a great game to get for a kid. Uh, but then for the older guys uh, on Xbox One, uh, you have Metro, which is tough as nails. Metro Exodus, Fallout 4, Game of the Year edition. Much better than Fallout 76. I do not suggest anybody get Fallout 76 for their kids or anybody. Uh, <clears throat> Devil May Cry is on that. Then on the PS4 uh, games, you have some pretty good ones there. Uh, I think in the $20 category, you have Jump Force, Just Cause 4, uh, Skyrim, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 
Um, Kingdom Hearts 3, which is a good game for kids. Uh, Days Gone and Division... Uh, the Division, sorry, too. Uh, most of those games, like I said, skew a bit older. Uh, but in general, it's a pretty good grouping of games. Now, for the $15, if you just go in cheap at Walmart, you have a lot of Xbox games. Uh, Nintendo Switch games are not that good of a choice, except for like some of the Lego games if you're looking for a younger kid. I don't really suggest many of the other ones on there. Uh, the... Xbox One games, you have your generic shooters, and you have Red Dead Redemption, the original one. Uh, you have the Halo games, uh, Borderlands, basically stuff you can get on Game Pass anyway. If you do have a younger kid, though, Lego Worlds is supposed to be pretty good. Where the $15 cat dollar category is at is the PlayStation 4. At Walmart, you can get Spider-Man, which is an excellent game for 15 bucks. You also have, and Spider-Man, really, it's a teen game. It's pretty good choice overall in general. Uh, you also have some games that I wouldn't get for your younger crowd. You know, you have The Witcher 3, Grand Theft Auto, um, UFC, Watch Dogs. There, there's some good choices in there. Now, if you're like me, you have some nostalgia for the old arcade games, especially games like the X-Men ones and the Ninja Turtles arcades. They sell these little mini arcades. Now, they're selling them for $350. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle arcade is $349. You have to assemble it, but it's an actual arcade cabinet. And I think there's a little box you can buy that makes it a little bit taller or higher. Good to sit around and play with a group of people. If you just, like, have a, I don't know, like a garage that you just want something cool like that, that'd be a good one for, uh, for a guy, I guess. Now... Over here also, we see that the Nintendo Switch is on sale for $2.99, which is the regular price, but it includes Mario Kart 8 as a digital download. Mario Kart 8 is one of those games that's really good for anybody. I mean, Grandma can play the game if you had to. There are different settings to where you can keep people from going off the road, and it will actually uh, accelerate for you. All right, so that's pretty much Walmart's ad. I think that is the store that most people can find and get to. Um, pretty good sales overall. And, of course, I got other things on sale. Now, the big one, probably the best sales I've seen on here is going to be GameStop. Uh, and you would expect that. I mean, they are a gaming, um, gaming shop. So it's the GameStop. So first up, right off the bat, they are trying to push the Nintendo Switch. It's way at the top. Thursday and Friday only, this Black Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday only, they have different sales going on. Uh, you can get a free $25 gift coupon whenever you buy a Switch on certain days right now. Now, the Nintendo Switch, $2.99 for the main Switch, which is the one... Yeah, And if you don't know, if you're listening to this and you, you have no idea, like... I don't know what I'm buying by my kid. I know there's a Nintendo Switch, but there's two of them now? What the heck is up with that? Well, Nintendo Switch has the original Switch where it, you know, pops things off and you can play it on your TV and a thing that looks like a toaster. Um, really good system. Uh, runs really well. I've seen videos of them dropping out of, uh, you know, like a thousand feet and they survive with scuffs and things like that. The screen is not a glass, it's a plastic, so it's likely to get scratches, but it's not likely to break. Generally a good system. Uh, the Nintendo Switch Lite is different. It's $100 less. You cannot play it on the TV. There's no way to do that. You can only play it by hand. So if you like are a household that doesn't have a TV in your kid's room, or you just don't want them to take up screen space or try to fight you for the TV. Uh, it's a pretty good system. And it's pretty hardy. Uh, now, there are some issues with Joy-Con drift, uh, but those are fixable nowadays. There's some uh, methods you can find online to fix Joy-Con drift. Uh, I've recently tested them out. Basically, you, you pull up the little flap underneath the Joy-Con uh, and put some out rubbing alcohol on it with a Q-tip let it dry. It's been working pretty well. I did that on about three pairs of Joy-Cons and haven't had any issues. All right, let's go for the doorbusters. So this is Good Friday. 
Oh, actually, I lied. You can ruin your Thanksgiving and go to GameStop. You can go to GameStop at 3 p.m. So I guess they figure everybody's done with, with dinner. Those poor GameStop employees. Or you can shop online Wednesday at 9 p.m. for these deals. But here are the doorbusters. They have... Uh, Ooh, Fallout 76 for 12 bucks. Nobody cares about that. Division 2, 12 bucks. Modern Warfare, 38. Anthem for $5. Now, Anthem on Xbox One is not doing very well. You might want to stay away from that one. Might be worth five bucks, though, if you're just looking for an online game. Borderlands 3, which just came out. 30 bucks. Not bad. I tried it this weekend. I was having a little bit of fun with it. Uh, Mortal Kombat, 28. Ghost Recon, 28. Generally very, very similar prices to Walmart. Pretty much what I said at Walmart is going to be about the same here. Now, there are some different bundles. Uh, there are uh, some... Now, all the bundles are about the same from what I said for uh, for Walmart. To where your PlayStation 4, one terabyte system is $199, where your Xbox systems are the same price. The difference is that there is a PlayStation VR bundle that is offered here that is, uh, it's going to be at about $199 for the PlayStation VR 5 game bundle. It includes like the headset and all this other stuff that you really need with your PlayStation uh, to go into VR. So if you're into VR gaming, it's a good way to go. Also, they have about 50% off different games like Gears 5. Uh, stay away. Look, look, don't get this for your children. Unless you want to show your children that you don't love them, stay away from WWE 2K20. Um, not a good game. Okay, it says $27.99. There's a reason why it's on sale. Next one, Red Dead Redemption 2 is basically 30 bucks on the PlayStation 4. Great game. Everybody loves it. So there are a plethora of games for different platforms that run different prices. Uh, just some good ones that I'm seeing on here. Days Gone, 20 bucks. Uh, Nino Cooney, 30. Sekiro, 27.99. Code Vein, 39.99. Uh, some pretty good prices on there. Now they have once again Spider-Man for 20 bucks. Very similar to Walmart, these sales figures. Now, what is different is the Breath of the Wild is a little more expensive here. At Walmart, you can get it for 30 bucks. At GameStop, $39.99. So, a little pricier there. Uh, next up, Thursday and Saturday. Thursday through Saturday only. So, you're pretty safe getting these at any time. However, they may be sold out, so you might want to watch it. Uh, you have games like, uh, for kids, Spyro on the Switch is 25 Plants vs. Zombies is uh, 30 uh, Then you have, for a little bit, you know, a older crowd, I wouldn't say for kids or really even teenagers half the time, Diablo, 17 bucks. Assassin's Creed games. Kingdom Hearts is 20 on the Xbox One. Uh, I've heard good things. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but if you have a teenager or a kid that's into anime, into Disney stuff, it's essentially like a combo of the two. Uh, Jump Force is a teen rated game on PlayStation 4 that, speaking of anime, combines a whole bunch of different anime characters into a big fighting game. It's done pretty well. All right, next up, they are also showing a couple of different PlayStation 4 systems. They have advertised a PlayStation 4 Pro 1 terabyte Glacier White system for $299. Now, if you don't know the difference between just the regular PlayStation 4 <clears throat> and the PlayStation 4 Pro. The PlayStation 4 is basically not going to run games in 4K. So if you're a parent, you don't have 4K systems in your house, don't worry about getting the one, getting the pay, ugh, PlayStation 4 Pro. However, if you want to make sure your kids see things in pristine quality, yeah, PlayStation 4 Pro is it. Now, it is nowhere near as strong as the Xbox One X. So... You know, the Xbox One X, $50 more. Um, I believe it's the better console out of the two. If you're really looking for graphics and trying to hit that kind of thing, if you know somebody that likes those kind of things, uh, not a bad system. Uh, also, if you need some new PlayStation controllers, they are $38.99 each on the doorbuster for that day. They have plenty of different accessories. 
One that looks pretty good on here out of the accessories that I'm seeing is the two terabyte external Seagate game drive hard drive. It says for the PlayStation 4, should work for other systems, uh, especially like the Xbox. The more digital that these consoles go, probably the more likely you're gonna need extra space whenever you download things. Uh, Power A has some charging solutions for 15 bucks and then there's different headsets. Headsets are good for, uh, they have a HyperX gaming, uh, cloud gaming headset that's 50 bucks, pretty good deal. There's some other things too in here. Um, let's see, anything else that would be good over here? Like I said, most of these sales, what you heard in Walmart's about the same. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 15, Rainbow Six, 15. Uh, let's see, The Show, 19, if you like baseball, or you have a kid that likes baseball, 20. Ace Combat, 7, 20 bucks. That's a uh, game where you fly an airplane and shoot things down. Near Automata, really good um, RPG for PlayStation 4 is 20 bucks. They have the Kingdom Hearts, the story so far, which I'm assuming is a combination of them, 20 bucks. And Concrete Genie, which I'll talk a little bit about later, is 20 bucks. That's one I'm actually really interested in. Um, then one cool thing that is at GameStop is the PlayStation 4 has a ton of games for 10 bucks. I'm gonna go through the list. Now all these games are pretty much quality games. I mean, you can't go wrong with them. Now, only one of these games is rated for E, and that's going to be Little Big Planet number three. Now they have Last of Us Remastered, Horizon Zero Dawn, Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, God of War, Persona 5, Bloodborne, Gran Turismo, and Uncharted Collection. All 10 bucks. I mean, if you are looking to give a teenager some games to play and you don't want to spend that much money, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, next up is the Xbox One system that's through the in the paper or on the digital paper. They have an Xbox One S uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order console bundle. That's a pretty good deal for 200 bucks. Now they also have a limited edition Xbox One X NBA 2K20 console bundle. Now NBA 2K20 is not really i mean unless you have somebody that's interested in basketball it's not it, that game's going to be on sale for dirt cheap in the future the reason why you're getting this one compared to the other xbox one x's is because it has pretty dots on it that's pretty much it honestly there's not much really special about that one um then you have your general 150 uh all digital edition that you see over at walmart they have some decent Xbox accessories on sale. One that I would suggest is the Power A Xbox One X wireless controller charging station. I have a uh, Power A charger thing, but I had to plug in uh, this one. You just pop it on. It, it's pretty, it's much nicer solution. Uh, also, if you purchase Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, you will receive, or any game like the game or a bundle, you'll receive a $15 Fandango movie ticket, which is pretty nice. Uh, also in the Xbox One X system, uh, they have Forza for $25, they have Far Cry New Dawn, $15, Skyrim for $20, Metro Exodus for $20. Uh, they just have a bunch of different games that are decent prices. Uh, if you're interested in Wolfenstein, Youngblood, they have it for $20. Just Cause 4 is $20. Uh, then they go through and they show different things that might be fun for a kid that you don't want to spend by a game, but they might be interested in Fortnite. They have the Fortnite Llama Drama Flute Drop Toy for $15. They also have a bunch of Nerf looking... Yeah, they are Fortnite Nerf guns for $80. That's pretty pricey. I think a kid would be just fine with Having a regular Nerf gun, you can put a Fortnite sticker on it, honestly. Okay, also, uh, there's virtual currency on sale, but that's gross. Virtual currency, not a big fan of. Um, next up, the Pokemon. They actually have plush toys for Pokemon on sale for 40 bucks a piece. If you have a kid that likes Pokemon, of course, they're selling Pokemon Sword and Shield, but it's not really on sale. So, I think that is about it for what I'd really kind of look at for um, GameStop. They do have, you know, a bunch of Nintendo Switch games on sale. 
I'm seeing as I'm going through this paper. Uh, wouldn't, you know, out of all these um, things I'm going over today, I think GameStop is really the strongest one out of the whole bit. Plus, you can buy a Super Mario Brothers 1-Up Waffle Maker. I mean, come on. Or a Pokeball <laughs> Popcorn Maker. They are really pushing some of their uh, stuff in the, uh, I guess, collectibles. So just kind of give you an idea of why they do that at GameStop now. Uh, not too long ago, ThinkGeek and GameStop kind of combined. I think ThinkGeek was bought by GameStop, so you, which makes a lot of sense that there's similar audiences for who's buying the stuff. So you're going to see a lot of toys and things like that at GameStops that they're really trying to push because they got to get them out of there. Speaking of which, need stuff for stocking suffers? Buy two, get one free for stocking stuffers. So anything that is a plush, what they call blind boxes, Nerf micro shops, and pop pez, you can buy two and get one free. Uh, also, all pre-owned games for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and 3DS is buy two, get one free. Heck, I might run in there and look at that kind of sell. That's a pretty good one. Now, you can buy one and get one free because they're trying to get rid of their stock for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, DS, Wii, Wii U, and PlayStation Vita games. So if you have a kid that has some of the older systems or you have an older system and you're looking to collect, just, just take a walk in there. You might find something you like. Uh, they do have some offers valid. Um, let's see. You can actually start your Black Friday stuff uh, starting tomorrow on a lot of games that are in there. Some that are interesting are the Sega Genesis Classics on PlayStation 4. They have a bunch of Yakuza games on there. Crystal Crisis on the Switch, which I'm actually thinking... My wife likes puzzle games. That might be one I have to look into for her. 20 bucks is a pretty good price. She's listening right now, so I'm kind of ruining it. All right. Uh, Guacamelee is a really fun game on the Nintendo Switch. It does get pretty tough. Uh, but that one's only 25 for the combo of Guacamelee 1 and 2. I highly recommend that game. Now, it is an E10 game, so it's, you know, kids 10 and up. There is some humor in there um, that can be a little questionable sometimes, but it's a pretty fun, very well-designed, very colorful game. Um, let's see. Battlefield 5 is $15. Really good game on Xbox One X. And if you are looking to either A... Show your kids some of the games that you used to play back whenever dinosaur roams the earth. Uh, and you rode those dinosaurs uphill and downhill both ways in snow on 100 degree days. You can show them the Sega Genesis Mini. It has a whole bunch of different games that you can play like Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff. All right. So under $25 category. Man, I just I thought I was almost done, but this just keeps going. Um, like I said, GameStop. Probably place to go. There are a ton of good games that look like uh, they're under twenty-five. Dark Siders Three is ten bucks. Uh, NBA Two K Playgrounds on the Switch fifteen. Far Cry Five fifteen bucks. They have Aladdin and Lion King, like the old classic games. Uh, which some of these are kind of tough as nails too. Those are twenty bucks if you want some nostalgia. It's on all the systems. Uh, Bioshock is $15 on the PlayStation 4. Witcher 3 is uh, $20 on the PlayStation 4. Uh, I'm not going to tell you all these games on here because some of them kind of suck. Uh, Dragon Quest, the newest one, is $20 on PlayStation 4. Good game, good game. Uh, Dead by Daylight on the Switch is supposed to be pretty good, $20. Uh, Terraria is hit or miss for me on the Switch. I, I didn't care for uh, some of the way that a console Terraria plays. Uh, it looks like it's a little kid's game. It's rated T, and it's it's just a little complex to play. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 on the PlayStation 4. Good game for kids. E10. Uh, 25 bucks. That's a good choice. All right, next game. Games that start at 30 and get a little bit, haul, tie, ugh, get a little bit higher up. Uh, if you're looking for like a cinematic experience, uh, Control is going to be a good one for 30 um, they have Baldur's Gate. If you're buying for somebody that used to be into PC games, uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 on the Xbox One X for 30. Uh, they have, let's see, Kingdom Hearts 3 for 30. Um, 
in general, there, there's just a lot of good games here. I would just suggest taking a look uh, and seeing what is there. Uh, next up, they do have the HTC Vive Pro. Now, the Pro Starter Kit here is $799. It's originally $1,099. So if you're looking into VR, this is the way to go. Now, they have just the headset for $599.99. The difference here is the Starter Kit includes the base station and two controllers. You kind of need those to play. Unless you had the old HTC Vive and you're just looking to upgrade it. Now, the... Vive Cosmos VR system is $599, and there's a wireless adapter for the Vive for $250. They have a ton of headsets on sale. They have webcams, gaming microphones, and all sorts of cool things. Um, and that's about it. I'm not really going to go into PC too much. Uh, there's just too many variables to go into that for PC gaming, and honestly, it's probably a little too expensive um, to really get a kid into PC gaming unless you really know what you're doing and you're probably building yourself. All right, so that is GameStop, probably the best place to go to. Let's go ahead and look at Best Buy. Now, Best Buy is not trying to push sales. Uh, by the way, I apologize if I sound a little weird today. I know the last uh, cast I had a, had a cold. Today, I, I kind of have some allergies or something. It is... Thanksgiving break for me. I'm off school. And here's a little thing with teachers or anybody that works in, a, I guess, a high stress environment and has weeks off. That's when you get sick. It waits until you're off work and then it sneaks up on you and slaps you in the back of the head just so you're a little miserable right at the beginning. Just to remind you that you're not at work. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to take a sip of coffee real quick and uh, let you think about the things that... You want to buy so far at GameStop and Walmart because there were some good deals. Take, write some notes down if you forgot to. All right, coffee consumed. <clears throat> Let's go. Best Buy. Uh, you can get a free screen protector with a Nintendo Switch console bundle. Not a bad idea. If you get a Switch, you get it for a kid. Really good idea to get a screen protector. Um, probably one of the glass ones would be helpful. Because I don't know if you know what kids do with consoles. I mean, they just toss them around like nothing. Like they're just juggling them at a, at a fair. All right. They have the same sort of sales. $2.99 uh, Switch console bundle with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, not really pushing a lot of sales. They, their sale prices are generally $10 more than everywhere else that I've said before. Um, I don't see much that I would really go to Best Buy and wait in that insane line because most people, I don't know if you've ever waited outside of a line for a Best Buy. Um, many, a lot of people are there to get the TVs and stuff. Um, they have pretty much the same thing you can get at Walmart. You can get at GameStop, which, you know, find whichever one has the shortest line if you're really wanting to get into there. But, the PlayStation 4 one terabyte con uh, console bundle is there. Um, they have about the same thing as everywhere else. So I'm not going to go any further with that one. Uh, I just am not seeing anything you can't find elsewhere. So take a look in your paper for Best Buy. Uh, it's going to be about the same. About the same. Uh, next one, Target. Target has doorbusters. Um, that are just as good as everywhere else. They have Mario Odyssey, Zelda, and Mario Tennis Aces for 30 bucks. So if you're already at Target and you want to swing by the game section, make it there first. Been in a Target at the beginning. People go there really quickly. Uh, they have over 100 games for $15 each. So that's a pretty good one to get to. Uh, they're very similar to the Walmart games. They have over 40 games for $25 each, and they have over 30 games for 30 bucks each. So just some highlights in each category. $30 category, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Mortal Kombat, um, Dragon Quest Builders 2. Then in the $25 category, man, this is a, these are tiny ads, hard to read. Uh, $25, Control, Spyro, Overwatch, uh, Sims, Just Dance, 
And then the $15 category, which is probably the best category of them all, because it's cheap, uh, has a lot of the, has Sonic, Racing, Rainbow Six, uh, Mario, uh, Rabbids, fun little game, Grand Theft Auto, don't get that for kids, can't tell you that enough. Um, they put World War Z at the top for PlayStation 4, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, but, yeah, if you're into those kind of games like that, go for it. Uh, over 10 games are $35 each. You can get Gears of War 5, Borderlands, Need for Speed, and Monster World Iceborne all for $35. Pretty good price. They do have... They have a PC gaming laptop. Uh, I mean, it'll do some things. I'm, I'm just looking... I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but... It's got an i5 on it. It's got a GeForce GTX 1068, 16 gigs of RAM for 600 bucks. Not a terrible price, only a 256 gigabyte hard drive, so solid state drive. I mean, it'd probably be good for school and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm a little iffy whenever people say gaming laptops for $600, a gaming lap, and also a con, like a, a big beefy like uh, one that you build yourself or a tower are really the ways to go if you're going to game. Laptops and gaming don't go together too well. Uh, they show the same PlayStation bundle. Now they do have... Ooh, they have the Marvel superheroes with X-Men and... Um, Oh, I, I got to click this one. I'm kind of excited about this. Marvel Upright Arcade Cabinet. It's got the Punisher, X-Men, Children of the Atom, Marvel Superheroes. It is an arcade cabinet for 250 bucks. So that is, that's pretty cool. They also have Pac-Man, but man, if I'm going to pay $250 for a cabinet, I want to play something a little more involved than Pac-Man, I guess. Uh, I think that should be a cheaper price. Uh, also, a pretty good little pack over here. If you're looking into a Nintendo Switch, they have the Nintendo Switch Traveler Go Play Action Pack. It includes some action grips, screen protector, thumbs, cleaning cloth, game card case, and micro SD card case for 20 bucks. Not a bad price. Gives you a screen protector and gives you something for your kids to throw their stuff in whenever you're traveling. Uh, then they have the $350 Xbox One X bundle with Gears 5 through, well, 1 through 5. And they have a PlayStation VR bundle with the 5 game pack for 200 bucks. They're also selling the Switch Lite for 200 And another PC gaming laptop. I, I'm really surprised. I, I'm, I'm not used to seeing Target really pushing laptops and computers. So it's interesting that it's there at all. Uh, next up on the list... Um, this is not a store that I really shop at, but I figured I'd include it because I know a lot of people like go to Costco and look for it and they get these deals on things. So I, I'll tell you, there's there's really nothing nothing there that's out of the ordinary. Uh, on and you know they have things on Thanksgiving Day, but on Black Friday they're gonna have. $80 off an Xbox One S, one terabyte all edition, uh, $180 off an Xbox One X, one terabyte edition uh, console. Might be a little cheaper than everywhere else. Uh, nothing, nothing too major. Now, there are two Xbox One X console bundles. I'm not sure what their main price is right now, um, but that might be one to look into if you are looking for a bundle and see what their prices are right now because um, they might be worth it. Uh, and also they're starting to push their Cyber Monday stuff, which Cyber Monday, if you don't know about Cyber Monday and you've been under a rock for the last you know, 10 years or you've recently come back from the uh, Middle Ages in some sort of time warp situation, uh, Cyber Monday is basically the sales um, that they do later on. Um, so on a Monday, whenever people are online looking for stuff. Next one, uh, Sam's Club is basically doing $15 off Nintendo Switch and accessories bundles. Probably not really worth it. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, you don't want that. Nintendo Switch and accessories bundles, uh, $334. They don't really do good sales at Sam's for video games. They used to. It's... 
Some of them are about the same, like the PlayStation bundles are similar. It's not a store I would really suggest uh, if you're looking for some sort of gaming console on the cheap. Um, next up, this is the most confusing of all of them, but very likely uh, that you would have somebody shopping here. So I, I wanted to include it. The trickiest one to understand and the favorite store amongst grandmas and moms of tweens, Kohl's. Uh, and this is my wife saying this. She said, if your wife is going to be happy with Kohl's cash after you buy, buy video games for yourself, I mean, kids, then go here. So here's how this works. This is this requires some math. You get $15 Kohl's cash. Now, that's cash you can spend on anything in the store that's only for Kohl's. You get $15 for every $50 you spend. And if you order online, you get a pro. If you use the promo code Give Thanks by November 29th, you get 15% off everything. So there's lots of numbers that are involved here. But basically, let's say you buy a $200 console. Well, you're going to get, what is that, $60 in cash back that you can spend on other things. So you buy the $200 console. Check out, use the Kohl's cash to buy you a video game after it. Not, not a bad idea, really, because most of their stuff is very similar priced. Uh, they have a Microsoft Xbox One S, one terabyte Fortnite bundle for 200. The PlayStation 4 Pro, one terabyte gaming console is 300. They, they really, they're, I couldn't find a whole lot on this because I don't think Kohl's, one, Kohl's doesn't really focus on gaming. It's there. It's like in a small shelf. It's where I go and hide whenever my wife or I'm with somebody in Kohl's. <laughs> I kind of wander around and look for like the little gadgety sections and the video games. There's never a lot there. But if you're looking there and you happen to see it, it might be worth it, especially if you want to get some Kohl's cash and spend it on other presents for people. So, uh, take another swig of coffee before we, well, I guess it's about time for us to move on because, you know, I'd loaded up Amazon, I'd loaded up Newegg, and they're really tough to find things for right now. Like, they have your general same sales prices everywhere. If you don't want to go out for the holidays and you just want to order online, Amazon is a good way to stay in. However, Walmart... Target, all these other places are doing the same exact kind of sales and you might have better luck sometimes, especially if you're dealing with, um, you know, like, I guess accessories because especially micro SD cards, stay away from Amazon and any SD card. They are often not the uh, right size and they package them. Uh, they might say it's like a terabyte card, but it's really only like 200 gigabytes. They do this all the time, even for the Amazon uh, shipped ones. It's been a problem lately. So I would highly suggest staying away from accessories unless you've read the reviews and they're pretty good on Amazon. Um, I wouldn't really go that route. And I'm also not going to suggest Newegg unless there's just a deal you cannot pass up. However... Newegg does have some issues because Newegg was bought by China a couple years ago. And they use a lot of sellers throughout um, all these different places. And I've had some really good deals. Like I got my 1X off of there. But it was definitely repackaged. Like they had changed some things around. There were double uh, stickers on things. And a lot of people have had issues where they might have sold things uh, to other people got them sent back, and then resold them. It's a little shadier than it used to be. So I, I would be a little careful with Newegg. I really can't suggest them as a company right now. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to some different price points. So I'm breaking these down into one, uh, looking at $100, two to $300 category, and then like the 400 plus category for gamers. These are basically you have this amount of money and you want to spend it 
That's what you, th these are my suggestions, I guess. So let's say you have a hundred bucks and you have a Nintendo Switch, a PS4 or an Xbox One. What game should you get? So I'm trying to focus on an all ages approach in these. Um, now with the Nintendo Switch, is really the best choice for like an all age console. You can find Epic exclusives that really can be enjoyed by all ages. However, they do tend to skew a bit pricier. Uh, so you might only get a couple of them. You know, you might get like two or three opposed to the PlayStation 4 where you could probably get about five or six for the same exact price. My first suggestion is Zelda Breath of the Wild. It is an excellent game, pretty much for all ages. Now, I mean, really young kids, of course, they probably won't be able to play some. It does get hard in uh, different areas, but I mean, you could just wander. It's a very pretty game. It's it's a great one for any age group, uh, other than like the super young. Next up is Super Mario Odyssey. Definitely going to be a game for people that have some nostalgia for old school gaming. Uh, Mario, especially for younger kids even. Uh, I mean, I've had my niece play it and she's six or seven. Uh, that's a pretty good one. She enjoyed that game. You can play with two players. Like one person can be the hat. So let's say you have a little bitty kid. And you you want to, you know, you can play it with the controller and then get a Joy-Con and throw the hat around. That's pretty fun for them. Next one, uh, depending on the age, uh, I would say Splatoon 2 or Mario Kart 8. Now, Splatoon 2 is a shooter. However, it's a much more family-friendly shooter, I guess, than, you know, Call of Duty. Um, you're shooting around ink on the ground and you're trying to knock out the other characters and you're trying to cover more space. Really fun game. I've played it uh, with some competitive people that have been ranked really high up. There is a lot of room to really, in, to, I guess, really get into the game and get really good with it. There's a huge following behind it and uh, you're not going to find uh, people that are chatting with your kid online. Uh, next one, Mario Kart 8 is really good for all ages and you can get grandma to play it like i said earlier now if you have a kid that likes tinkering likes building stuff nintendo labo around 60 or 70 dollars has a couple of really cool things uh they can basically create like robot suits they could create little projects that teach your kid how to program uh i mean simplified programming concepts really would suggest that under 100 bucks so those are the ones I'd suggest for Nintendo. Uh, next one up, PlayStation 4. There are plenty of choices on the PlayStation 4 in this price range. With it being the best selling of the bunch for a long time, you really have a lot of wiggle room for like a hundred bucks. Pretty safe console in general too for a younger kid or teen. Now, first up off the bat, Spider-Man. Excellent game. You can find it for 20 bucks anywhere almost. Uh, next one is Concrete Genie, uh, which is a really cute, fun little game. It's got high scores. Uh, trying to find where I put the Concrete Genie button on here. But it is just... There we go. I'm going to read through this one for you. Uh, Concrete Genie follows the heartwarming journey of a bullied team named Ash who escapes his troubles by bringing his colorful imagination to life in his sketchbook while exploring his hometown. So, really good game, uh, really good message behind it. Can highly suggest it. Next one up, Little Big Planet 3. Lots of, um, just, it's a good side scroller, really good graphics for younger kids, of course. Uh, next one, the PS Now subscription is pretty good. If you look into a year subscription, or I think a little less than a year for a uh, for hundred bucks, really good choice. Uh, there's a lot of games on it. There are a lot of games for all ages on there. Probably a better selection too in the uh, streaming services uh, that you can get. Next category, Xbox One. It's really not a choice for younger kids. You know that it's just not really. Um, now, once again, <clears throat> this is a console you buy for your kid if you want to play games at night when they're asleep, but you want some options for your kids. Uh, Game Pass. 
Game Pass is the way to go. Can't say that enough. You can get it for about a hundred bucks for a year, or get the three month. Um, you know, get a couple of those three month ones. Just get that. Honestly, I'm going to tell you some other games, but that's where it's at at the moment. You can get Minecraft for the system. Uh, Ori and the Blind Force is another good game. Uh, there's really just not like a lot of titles that are really for everybody on this console that I would really suggest. Um, they're working on it. You can see that after XO19 and all the stuff they're putting out. I think they're becoming more of a generalist console. I think Rowdy was complaining that they're getting a little too uh, cartoony. You know, do they want to be known for that? But I think they're just trying to expand their portfolio, so to speak. All right, next up, $200 to $300 category. This is if you're getting a new console. Not, I'm not going to make suggestions like, where do I spend my $200? I mean, if you don't spend $200 on your kid of just games, this is only if you want to get a new console. All right. Best thing on the PlayStation 4 is the $200 one terabyte console. Uh, once again, Last of Us, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn. Not for your little kids. For an older one. Or, you know, a boyfriend or a husband. Next one, $149 for Xbox One S, one terabyte all edition. Uh... All digital edition with Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Fortnite. Add on Game Pass, though. Don't forget it. Uh, then, if you have 200 bucks, go to GameStop, get a $25 gift card uh, afterwards for the Nintendo Switch Lite. Make sure you get a case. Do not forget to get a case because your children are going to throw it at some point or they're going to put it in their bag and there's going to be a peanut butter sandwich in there or something like that. You need to get it protected and have a place that they know to put it. Uh, next one, $299, original Switch. Just get this Switch with Mario Kart 8. Don't get anything else. That'll be your $300 right there. Whereas the Switch Lite, if you want to spend up to $300, you can get a couple of games for $30 a pop that are good to go, but don't forget that case. Now, the original Switch, though, that $300 doesn't come with the case unless you go to Target. There you go. Uh... Next one, $400. If you have $400 just laying around and you want to spend it on your kid, the Xbox One X, now this is for a teenager or older, um, has Gears of War 1 through 5. Pair it with some Xbox Game Pass for $25. Bucks. It's expensive, but they are consistently putting quality out, and I think this is probably the most viable console to survive longer than the others. Because they're still going to be releasing games for it that'll be playable uh, even when Scarlet comes out. So if, you know, you want a gaming console to be around for a while, um, even past next generation, you don't want to buy into that generation for like an older teenager, that would probably be a good one to get. Uh, next one is the PlayStation 4 one terabyte bundle plus one year of PlayStation Now. Uh, or you could just buy a ton of games for any age group. There's plenty of games in that $15, $20 category. Next, $150 for the Xbox One S, one terabyte, plus Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, get another controller, maybe a hard drive to go along with it. That'll fit under your budget very easily. Uh, and finally, Nintendo Switch for $299 or $199, but get a case. But there's plenty of quality Nintendo games. You just might not get as much of a um, deal out of it from the other consoles because it's it's the newest console on the block. All right, and just for fun, let's say you have, you want to get your wife into gaming. You know, where do you go with that? I'm going to tell you right now. You go to Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, if you can, uh, which isn't out yet, but it's coming out in the, it's going to be coming out in the spring. Uh, Harvest Moon games, sort of. Uh, Stardew Valley is where it's at. It's pretty much on every system. So whatever system you already own, go get Stardew Valley. Play with your wife. She'll probably like it. Uh, next one is uh, Apple Arcade. If you like know somebody that's not really a gamer, but you want them to play some games, uh, Rowdy5000 usually suggests a Apple Arcade all day long. Uh, also, Jackbox games. The Jackbox games are really great, basically like new age equivalents to board games. And they range from kid-friendly to definitely not kid-friendly. Uh, 
Uh, I will be playing Jackbox games with the family during Thanksgiving. Uh, it's requested by my family that I bring the Switch usually to different uh, meetings with family. Meetings, it sounds like we're having an important discussion. Uh, but no, like whenever we have gatherings. Uh, and can't suggest it more. Really fun game. Uh, system. There's lots of different games for it. I think there's six of them now. Uh, six packs, which have like four to seven games in them each. And lastly, uh, let's say you want, this is going to be one of the weirder ones, but let's say you have a family member uh, that is stuck in the house and they might not be able to get out much. Uh, the Oculus Go might actually be a good gaming system for like grandpa or grandma. It's kind of a weird thought, but just follow me on this. So there are lots of different games like fishing or, you know, just general travel games or places you can go in VR uh, that might be good for people that just aren't able to get out as much. Uh, so might be a good one to kind of look at if you're wanting to do something special but it might not work out. You know, if you have somebody that's completely removed from it, you never know. Uh, so now that's about it for my gaming guide. Thank y'all for listening to the lamest gamest uh, holiday guide. And I'm about to do a special segment for, uh, you know, it's, it's Thanksgiving coming up and there have been a lot of people that have helped us out. So I wanted to do a segment called the list of, of many thanks, uh, or the list of thanks. So if you want to hear it after the break, uh, make sure to keep tuned in. Now, before I jump into the list of thanks, don't forget that you can tell your friends to check us out on Spotify, iTunes, lamergamers.transistor.fm, or wherever you cast your pods. So recently, we've hit 1,500 downloads to the Lamer Gamers podcast. So in the spirit of the Thanksgiving holiday, I wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone that's helped us out with podcasting from those that have retweeted us, helped with technical issues, created reviews, or really just assisted in any way. Uh, this show has not been particularly easy to fit into our lives uh, working in the classroom or the emergency room. So we wanted to do something special for those that made things smoother on our side quest from professional life. Now, if your name's not on this list and you think it should be, please send me a direct message on Twitter at LamerGamersCast or email me at LamerGamersPodcast at gmail.com so we can make sure to give you some extra recognition, maybe at the end of an episode coming up. Now first, I want to throw out the biggest bucket of thanks to Rowdy5000 for coming up with the idea of the Lamer Gamers podcast. We've been friends for like 20 years now, and this show's really been one of the most fun things I've done or worked on. As you get older, you know, and if you're younger listening to this, you don't know this yet, but if you're older, you know what I'm about to talk about. Uh, as time goes on, you know, People just kind of drift apart uh, or people get busy or you move on. And so there's not a lot of people that you really hang out with. And so, um, you know, Rowdy has been one of the people that have been around and, you know, hang out with regularly. Uh, and this is really, you know, we, we do this every two weeks where we get together uh, and it, we don't live close really. You know, it, it takes 45 minutes for either one of us to get to each other's house. Um, it's really been a great source of camaraderie uh, that I think I needed outside of the professional world because, uh, you know, I, I have work friends, but generally they just stay work friends. It's hard, I think, uh, sometimes to make work friends and keep them uh, outside of work. Uh, so it's been really cool to kind of have, you know, somebody to hang out with, talk video games, and just go do stuff. You know, go eat uh, sushi fish or whatever. Uh, also, it's it's helped to spark my creativity and passion to create art again, uh, which I haven't been doing for some time. So making this podcast has really been a cool thing for me as a, um, 
I guess it's somebody that likes to be creative to have an outlet. Uh, next, I wanted to thank my wife, Loyal Historian, uh, for, for dealing with me talking about video games nonstop. Or, well, I guess even more nonstop since podcasting started. Uh, she's my biggest supporter and always uh, allows me to buy the kind of expensive equipment to make this podcast. Also, she's actually helped make one of our most popular podcasts with the War Remains VR experience. It took her hours and hours to get the material together. We'll be doing more stuff with a loyal historian in the future, too. Uh, speaking of wives, I also want to thank Rowdy's wife, Grape Ape. I don't know what to put as her name, but I'm using her Twitter uh, handle for supporting uh, him and me and all this craziness. Because uh, I know it's uh, she comes and comes joins Rowdy sometimes uh, out over here, too, and kind of feel bad because my wife and her are just kind of sitting around having to be quiet the whole time. Um, all right. Next up is, uh, my friends, Gunslingerer and Mom Mom. Uh, they're friends of mine that I game with on the weekends occasionally, uh, and just enjoy hanging out with, uh, they both been awesome fans for the show and have actually suggested some really cool content ideas. And they kind of give me a perspective into multiplayer games, MMO and gaming for kids that I don't quite get by myself. Uh, so I really want to thank them. <laughs> I know mom, mom, she like, uh, she tells me she listens and uh, waiting for her kid to pick up at school every day. I, I know some people, some uh, moms uh, and dads that actually do that. And that's how they listen to the podcast. All right. I got a huge list going, so I'm going to kind of break it down into parts. So my next one is the Game Witness Discord. You guys have been awesome. They are my buds from NintendoEnthusiast.com forums uh, that have kind of, I mean, the forums are still there. They're just not as active, and the Game Witness was Nintendo Enthusiast um, Discord. It, it changed. Uh, Wagos from uh, Game Witness really kind of turning into its own thing. Uh, so these guys are kind of responsible for me doing this and getting really into gaming because uh, I was posting on their forums there after Mattavelli uh, actually sent me a, a direct message on Twitter and got me involved in it because uh, I was working so much. I didn't really have like a... I guess a community of gamers that I was really hanging out with or chatting with or gaming with. And uh, the guys at Game Witness really got me into gaming and dealing with community. Um, even though I've been involved with it, actually through another mat, um, I wasn't really like in the nitty gritty with it and like really uh, playing games with people. So I really thank them. Uh, Matavelli, Wagos, uh, Fried Shoes, a uh, hilarious guy, very not, <laughs> not appropriate though, uh, if you know Fried Shoes. Uh, but thanks, Fried Shoes. Anyway, uh, Owen Koenig, I always say Koenig, Koenig, I always mess it up. Uh, he's a gamer, probably one of the better ones for, uh, if you need to know how to play a game, like the technical intricacies, he's always been good at that. Uh, Snickety and K Muff, I kind of met at a similar time, both uh, guys that I play a lot of Splatoon with. Uh, very cool guys. K Muff always uh, messages me and sees what's going on. Um, so that's all nice of him. Karkashan, she uh, does a lot of gaming on YouTube. Um, and she's always been in the forums. I know she's involved with IGN uh, forums too. Uh, she's always a fun person to chat with. Another Southerner too uh, in our group that's not all other necessarily Southern. Uh, good twin and evil twin. Got to mention them at the same time because they're twins, right? Uh, both super fun to play games with. Uh, some of the uh, some of the best times I've had with these guys is like Rocket League or uh, you know things like that have been really fun. They both have very interesting personalities that are hilarious uh holographic foil one of my former tory basher friends a uh, very cool guy to play with uh and he always checks out the podcast and stuff miku live uh mr chris uh from across in england uh then the marvelous crabby and drufus uh they are husband and wife uh, very cool people to chat with. I talked with Drew all the time on Game Witness. He checks out our stuff too. Uh, Squid Lord, I'm going to thank Squid Lord. He is uh, one of the most fun people to argue with in our political discourse room. <laughs> uh, very fun guy, though. Very cool guy. 
uh, Dundera. Haven't talked to him much. I know he's busy in college. Uh, but he was always the scariest person to deal with in uh, Splatoon because of his minigun. I mean, Snickety was a scary guy. Snickety is like one of the top people uh, in the world in Splatoon, actually. But um, you just can't catch him uh, is his thing. He's just the master at covering everything. Dundera, however, will shoot you. He will straight up destroy you. Uh, so Life of Link, also another fun guy uh, to play with. Presto, uh, also known as Rock, I, I've played with him quite a few times. He's fun with uh, chats. I know he does a lot of stuff with uh, investment and financial stuff. Uh, I need to check to see if his podcast is up and running. He was talking to me about it for a while. Uh, the Amazing LSB does a lot of streaming. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I wanted to mention him because he was always one of the more fun people uh, in Game Witness. Tyson, he's also at the Total Set. Very cool guy. Brief, Super Faker Brothers, Rai Rai. Uh, Rai Rai uh, actually uh, has some friends at the C Word Pod, and they mention our podcast a lot. So I really appreciate that. And then Palif, which she's really from the Texas Discord server, but she's joined in Game Witness. Uh, very fun person that's local. Next up, uh, by the way, if I missed anybody in GW, I apologize or... Uh, it, just get with me. Message me and you know, call me bad names or something. I'll make sure to get you on here. Uh, next one, Parallax Media. These guys have been helping us out. They're pretty awesome. So big thanks to John the Nerd. He's been super helpful and sharing things. Eface, uh, at all Eface is uh, his name on Twitter. Grim UK, always got fun stuff online. Errol, Ichigo, Cortar, Sora Invoked 01, uh, which Sora Evoked, always appreciate the uh, positive stuff from you uh, on there. The Jorsh, always appreciate y'all, and Von Hyde and Jason Cortier. Uh, thank y'all for sharing and uh, kind of working with us over at the uh, the Lamer Gamers podcast. Really appreciate the guys over at Parallax Media. Uh, now for some non-gaming supporters and creators. Uh, big shout out to Regen E Racing. Dean Warwick out in New Zealand. He is the host of E uh, Region E Racing podcast, which is all about electronic racing. But he's uh, really helped us with some technical stuff with spreading the name of our podcast. And he's listened to all the episodes. I, I really appreciate him. Uh, the Total Set from Tyson. Very cool one. The C Word for sharing our stuff all the time transistor.fm for hosting and they've also helped us with some things and shared our podcast on instagram very cool people pod hunt which is a really good um, service for if you're looking for podcasts that share our things all the time we're actually one of the uh, supporters of it and they post our stuff every episode pod chaser is a good platform for, for reviews they've shared our stuff and uh, the War Remains Twitter. Uh, they've retweeted our stuff when we did that War Remains uh, episode. Next up is going to be actual gaming podcast. Uh, what the Famicom. Always super friendly. Always shares our stuff. Now, he runs a not safe for work podcast about video game nonsense. Very cool guy. Uh, next up is more than a podcast at more uh, T-A podcast. It's o M O O R. ETA podcast. A uh, very super friendly dude. Uh, like his podcast. He's had some really cool ones on Dreamcast too that I enjoyed. Um, he's messaged us about our top games and things. He's mentioned us in our podcast. Uh, really fun guy. Uh, Indie Incursion. They're an indie games podcast at Indie Pod. Uh, they're also involved with Parallax. Very cool guys. Check them out. Uh, the Goomba. Tony Coffee. Always has fun stuff that he's posting. I comment on it a lot. Uh, very friendly guy. Uh, next one, Metroid Mike 64. Another one that has a lot of good stuff that they post. That's just super friendly, uh, willing to, you know, reply to people that comment that are smaller than them, I guess. Uh, Gamer Heads podcast. They just shut their doors, but uh, they're very good podcasts to go back and listen to. Uh, I thank them for, you know, sharing our stuff occasionally and liking us and stuff. Uh, Alt Dab Podcast, one of the groups that uh, I guess we were starting about the same time. I haven't seen them post in a while, so hopefully they're going to put out some more things, but I wanted to mention them too. Retro Game Brews. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go through some of these a bit quicker. Uh, by the way, Retro Game, Game Brews, liking our stuff on Friend Fridays and things like that, or Follow Fridays have been good. 
uh, Lamer the Gamer at Lamer the Gamer ninety three. Uh, it's another Lamer Gamer <laughs> that shared our stuff. Really cool guy does Twitch streams. Uh, at Fupo F U P P O Headhunter, uh, he's helped us out a little bit, uh, and he streamed for St Jude Hospital too. Uh, really cool supporter. Super Mega Ten is a top ten gaming podcast. They've been fun. Uh, they're a good one to listen to. At Console Crew, it's a group we actually just put it put. Ugh, that we just found out that puts out good content. Um, Nerds Amalgamated Podcast is a good one. Uh, and then Mr. Matthew Allen from Pixel Count, a uh, good friend of mine. Uh, he's done work for Lionhead in the past uh, with Community. He's actually the person that really got me into video game community and doing comics in the video game area years ago. Check out the game that uh, he helps with. Uh, it's going to be Ken Seed, K Y N S E E D. Excellent game. Uh, next one, OZ9 Podcast. They're a very cool sci fi podcast. They remind me of that old school radio theater production, but in space. Uh, and for one of the stranger ones, that's really, really kind of cool. Um, Alyssa Patio Wells at AP Wells, W A L L E S on Twitter, but at Lamer Gamer on Instagram. Now we're at Lamer Gamers on Instagram, uh, but she is uh, part of the MWM uh, I. So she's one of the people that are kind of involved with War Remains, uh, their VR experience. She's also one of the Atari Board of director, <laughs> Directors. And she goes by Lamer Gamer, and she just happened to find us uh, after we were talking about um, about War Remains, and has been super friendly, and you know I think shared with a couple of people out uh, out that way. Uh, I think in the Californias, far far away from the uh, country, I mean state of Texas. Uh, so I really appreciate her and for reaching out to us uh, and stuff. Uh, and sharing some more stuff. Uh, next one, Lampost Gaming has been a group that has been really cool lately at the Lampost 2. Um, they are really smart with how they talk with people and get everybody to interact from lots of different content creators. Uh, Team Pixel at Team P1XEL uh, is a Wii U gaming Twitter. Just really fun if you like Wii, uh, Wii U. Uh, Dark Cloud 90, 190, I'm sorry. Uh, she has some interesting topics to comment on. She's a uh, streamer. Um, some pretty cool stuff. And last one is for the gaming groups. At Idle Sloth 1984 has the freshest Xbox news, and, and they like our stuff often. So very cool. Uh, next group are our local shows that we're really interested in. Uh, Box of Content, Wake Up Beaumont. Uh, A to Z, uh, at A to Z Beaumont. Uh, by the way, let me kind of go over some of their shows. Box of Content is a really cool podcast where they literally just have a box of random uh, topics. And so they pick a card out of their box, and that's what they talk about. I just like the concept, too. Uh, there's some good folks uh, in the you know Southeast Texas area. Uh, A to Z. Uh, podcast is a local one in Southeast Texas. Zach Bowman has brought us in, uh, really told us, uh, you know, introduced us to the local scene. Um, very cool people. They have a really nice studio out there and they rent like studio space and stuff. Uh, next one at NOLA Nerdcast. It's a New Orleans based nerd podcast. Uh, also at Didgery Dave, uh, found out that an old uh, friend of my brother and myself. Uh, is now running a podcast called Didgery Dave's Eclectic Music Hour that he's just started. Very fun. Not not exactly a lot of eclectic music, really, but a lot of cool stories, so if you want to check that out. Um, then at Atari Texas uh, is a YouTuber that I met on the Texas Discord that also likes our stuff. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for the local scene. There, There's more people in the local scene. Hit me up if I haven't mentioned you. Uh, like Wake Up Beaumont has a good one. They, they do a morning show type thing. All right, now for the, uh, I guess as Rowdy would say, the Artsy Fartsy podcast. These are people that are just involved in the arts that have been super helpful for us. Uh, first up, at Art Sistery. They always share our show. They have a fun podcast. It's a little on the racy side, though, so I wouldn't suggest it unless you're 18 plus. Um, but they're super friendly and they were tough enough to survive a typhoon in Japan. 
they are really like intensely strong. I think, uh, you know, they're really cool people. Fun podcast going over art history. Um, next one is at anime art history, just a fun little group over there. Um, they like some of our stuff, not so much. I think a podcast, but more of just like a Twitter. Uh, and then please touch the art podcast has liked and shared some of our stuff too. Very cool things. Um, and just some general followers at Chaffos, uh shares our stuff all the time. Sadistic Ice Bear is a, a Swedish fan that uh, reached out to us, gave us some good feedback recently, so I wanted to mention them. Uh, next one, Texas 211, Texan2118, also known as SM, uh, shares our stuff all the time on Twitter. Uh, at Giant Medic1985, uh, good friend of Rowdy5000, mine named Ian. Uh, he is a giant medic. He's a big, tall dude that was a paramedic. <laughs> uh, so also another guy uh, that knows Rowdy and I, uh, Scott Berman at Option VBC. He's a uh, he's an entertaining character. Uh, has always has some funny stuff to say. Uh, and just generally, you know, a big old thanks to anyone that's followed us on Twitter or Mines. Uh, Mines Gaming hashtag is a really big one too. They share our stuff and it's really the only way we get movement on uh mines without like actually spending some tokens there all right so if you've enjoyed this episode please share with friends and drop a review or a like wherever you found it at uh we should have a few more episodes before the year uh lets out including a top 10 lamest games of 2019 year in spectacular next year we're also working on moving to a weekly format that includes a new regular side quest i'm still playing with the name called simply news um where myself simply travis or rowdy 5000 will read the latest gaming news to keep you caught up on what's going on in the gaming world without visiting a website that's going to have four million pop-ups we'll do that whenever we don't have a regular episode or a side quest planned and we'll just kind of catch you up on the news so you have some content every monday uh but anyway that's all i have for today thanks again for listening to the lamer gamers podcast have a great day and a fantastic holiday and Christmas season. This is Simply Travis, and I am clicking the button to sign out. Mm-hmm.